Well, one of our viewers from South Africa sent an email with a picture. That was quite nice saying, a friend of mine has asked me for a painting which needs to include a hay bale in a field. This is her chosen picture. That's this picture right here. And she says, my question is, how do I make those textures on the hay bales? Oh, let's solve that mystery. Well, just like all requests I get, how do you create this? How do you paint this? How do you paint that? You know I'm not going to give you a formula. But I'm going to show you a technical procedure that will work. But not only for things like textures on hay or even textures on grass. Almost any kind of texture that resembles what's ha even hair or um, fur on animals, that sort of thing, then this little approach will work. Now, so what, of course, all, all approaches to painting uh, require, first of all, that we get some semblance of the shape, I call that placement, on the canvas. And so what we'll do, first of all, is simply just uh, place that hay bale, and then uh, very quickly here, we'll place it, and then, then we will look at how to solve that problem of how do you make that texture? So, uh, so we'll just do, let's do just sort of a, a very quick placement, and let's see, that's coming down like that, and coming like that, and coming, coming like that. And you see, I'm doing a small, cuts down on time, and we will do a similar thing back there. That's coming down like that, and that. That's pretty straightforward there. Now, the other thing I like to do is to. Uh, find the shadows and the lights, or find the major shadows and major, major lights. We don't have a real strong light source here, but we do have enough light that we can see uh, this area right here and this area here and here are light, in light, and these areas in here are more in shadow. And that really is important when you're doing uh, any paint, any painting, in fact, because if you can see where the lights and shadows are, you're way ahead. So the next thing I like to do is to just uh, diagram that on, on the piece itself. And so then in that case, what I'll do here is I'll just, I'll just uh, uh, block in here little areas, sort of scrub them in loosely, uh, little areas, these areas of where I see shadow. And I see that shadow coming down like that, and it's narrow right here and getting a little bit wider as it goes down here. A little bit of shadow right in there. Um, we see um, shadow as it moves up that bay, that hay bale. I almost said, no, I won't tell you what I almost said. Anyway, uh, we see that shadow moving up uh, kind of irregular, so we'll just m make what we see there. And sort of a little bit more of that shadow moving there. And we have a shadow moving, a shadow area moving here like that. All right. Now, because I'm showing you a specific little technique, uh, I'm not trying to make a painting. I'm not going to use any background. Also, this is going to work fine because the area around it is, uh, its uh, environment is relatively light. So I don't need to really have any dark value behind there. So I don't think I'll do that. Now, at this point, uh, you find your colors, the colors that you need. So I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to find a generic color that we would do this. So we're going to need a range from the darkest dark. You see that very dark in here. We're going to need a range from the darkest dark to this value in light right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull onto my palette here. Um, I, I read that color as a, a red orange. It's a red orange. It's very desaturated, and um, and so I'm just going to pull. 
I know that uh, Rembrandt makes a transparent oxide red, which is red orange. So and, it, and it's somewhat desaturated already, very dark. So that's a good color to start with. So I'll put that on the palette. I detect some little bit of uh, of uh, uh, violet, red violet in that, and so I will pull some red violet on the palette just in case I need it. And so I'll put that right here. And this is the um, uh, Gamlin Quinacridone Violet. So I've got those two that I see there in the way of color. And then I want the ability, uh, I see down in here, a little bit of that uh, red-orange is getting darker and sort of losing some hue in order to get that. Uh, losing hue means desaturated. And so then if I use my color well, I know that in red orange I go across to blue blue green to get that desaturation but I also know that because that red orange leans a little bit more towards orange I can pull it back in and I can actually use a blue since blue and orange are complements and they desaturate each other so I'm going to pull a little bit of the ultramarine blue out here like that then I will have my my color ingredients set on the palette except that I do need white. Well, I've got my white right here. Now, the next thing I always do is what I call block in. And I think this is a very important step, especially for when you've got lots of texture like we have in here. This kind of texture, this kind of texture, and the kind of texture, if we were going to make a painting of this whole scene, the kind of texture we see back there. So what I want to do for the block in then is to squint like that. If you're not a good squinter, if you just pull your eyelids down over your eyes and almost close them and look through your eyelashes, you'll be squinting. So you don't have to do that to squint. You can just you know, kind of drop your eyelids down and, and just get that little uh, obscuring of the details that we need in order to see what, what, that, would, what that block in would be. Now, I, when I do that, I then I don't see the textures. And I don't want to see the textures when I first start. So when I do that, what I can see are values, which is exactly what I want to see. And I'll start with those uh, darker values first. And I ignore, in the block-in part, I'm laying a foundation. What's going to happen next will be on top of that, and that's what we'll show to the viewer. The viewer will see some of this, but not not like I'm doing it now. So, so I'm going to go into this... Um, uh, this red orange and I'll pull some white down here right here just so I have it handy uh, get the palette knife good and clean all right now I'm gonna pull enough red orange in here and I'm gonna pull enough white in that red orange until I just get just that value I see now, there's the key for starting out and actually it doesn't hurt for the block in to be in this case, maybe just a tiny bit darker than, than what you're really seeing because if you have a tiny bit darker, we're going to put some light on top of it. And not much, but just a tiny bit. Now, when I do that, though, and I hold this over, you see I'm pretty close in there, but I may need to add a little bit of that ultramarine blue in there just to sort of give me that darker part. Now, here's what I'll do. I just, I'll just, uh, sometimes I stroke that in or sometimes I scrub it in like you see me doing now. When I scrub it in, I use um, a filbert. I uh, use, usually I use a filbert or at least a bristle brush. This is Chinese bristle. Uh, or if I'm stroking in, I'll use my rosemary, uh, whatever that is, um, um, 3274. Yeah, okay. Aside from that, well, those things are important because uh, if you have the right tools, it makes the job go easier. So I'm just going to scrub generally, not trying to get necessary a hay bale. I'm just looking at the shape of that shadow and I'll just scrub that in generally the way my squint, the way I'm squinting and seeing it when I squint. And I'm seeing that still at about that same value, perhaps a tiny bit lighter in places so I can get it just a little bit lighter. I use white for that, works perfectly well. Nothing wrong with using white if you use it right. Alright, see what I did there? Uh, as I'll pull that down. Now this is a little darker. This is showing more as in lights. So I'll show you what I do with that in just a sec. Go over here. That one doesn't have quite as much hue in it, so I'm going to add a little bit of the Ellesmarine Blue to it as I pull that around. 
And I'm just going to scrub that in very generally. And same thing as I move down here. I'll scrub it in, pull my brush around like that. And this needs to be very thin. The, the, not with medium. I don't use medium when I paint at all. Uh, not with medium, but just applied so that it covers the surface, but no texture, no thick paint on the surface. Just enough paint to cover the surface. And then this goes, if you see what's happening there, that kind of goes like this and kind of tapers about right there. And then it kind of begins to spread out a little bit. And that's what we got right there. Sort of something sort of like that. And then over here, I want to add a little bit more of the altering blue into that, the blue into the red orange to get that just a get that that darkish that uh, almost what we call occlusion shadow. That means that the most of the light has been shut out. So I'll pull that, just go around the edge like that, and kind of pull that up like that, and I'll pull that into this. And just pull it up like that. Now I'm still squinting. Now that doesn't go up very far. And I'll let's see it's getting a little bit we see a little bit more of that uh, red orange hue as it goes up. So I add a little bit more of the red orange hue. So I get a a painting of the shadow. That's all I've got there. It's just a, a painting of the shadow. That's what a block in. Uh well that's how we start out with block in. It's more about block in is more about the color, putting the color and the value where you see them than it is about painting the thing. So I'm not really trying to get the pay bell. I'm just trying to find those shadows and the lights. That pretty much takes care of the shadow area. And so now I want to block in. Now I'm still not ready for texture. I want to block in that lighter area. And so what I'll do there is I'll come right over in here. I go over into my white. And let's see, let's get, get that value. I want to get the value, pretty much the value I'm seeing there. And usually I'll have a value line built on the palette. Then we have other quick tips about the value line. And go to our uh, channel page there and, and uh, search for value line. You'll see. Now what I'll do here to be sure I have the right value, uh, usually I'll either hold my brush up like this or I'll put it on the back of the palette knife. I want to compare my mixture with what I'm seeing there. And I'll say, right, I would like that to be a little bit darker than what I'm really seeing. But I'm so also comparing for color. And I'm going to, I'm going to desaturate that just a little bit. That means that I add blue to it, I've got to add more white back in because the blue is going to darken it as well. Now it's called value correcting. And that's closer to what I want there. So there, I'm just going to scrub in that light value and as I'm scrubbing it in I'm going to blend it into the shadow blend the light into the shadow because I see it blended right there see the light blended into the shadow I give it a very very gentle stroke downward and it will do that and so this is what we'll do here I also want to blend these edges right here and so now I've got that uh, just a block in of the light I see all uh, right now over here I'm going to block in. Now this light is a little darker. This is more on the shadow side, and that light is, tends to be a little bit darker. So you look for those degrees of comparison when you're doing uh, uh, painting. Compare your values. Uh, if, if just because it says light doesn't mean that it's the brightest light. Sometimes it may be a, a light that is not getting quite as much sun rays. And so I'll hold that there for the value. That's close enough. Now I'm going to work that in. I'm just going to stroke that in. I'm just going to continue to build that upward. You see this is getting a little lighter. So I'll I'll just, this is called scumble. When you're pulling the brush, uh, pulling the paint off the, the belly of the brush, holding the brush kind of like this. And so I'm just going to lightly scumble because you see, I change, see that change in value. So I'm going to do that first of all. I'm going to blend that in, blend that light in, and do the same thing down here. I want all those edges somewhat blended. And then I'll do a similar thing over here. And let's see, get that uh, pattern that I see right there. And pull that right over on top there. I kind of lost a little bit of that shadow area. But I need to build that back in. All right, that then, of course, it would come on out like this and so on. Um, now, 
before I get any further there, I'll go back, let's rinse the brush and go back and be sure I have those values in for the shadow. Um, so, so I just want to reinforce that shadow area there. And so this is quickly. Not much paint on the brush at all at this stage. We don't need much paint at all on the brush at this stage. So this is what we'll do right here. Okay, now, once you have the value, once you have the shadows, just the shadow areas uh, placed, this is a little bit darker right here. Let's get that just a little bit darker. Now I'm going to just carefully be sure I have those shadow areas placed the way I see them. And right here too, just move my moving my hand in the direction I see those shadows moving because that is important you see if you paint the lights and shadows as lights and shadows not as the thing you see but if you paint lights and shadows as lights and shadows that you see in the beginning you will be surprised at how the painting pretty much will just paint itself and whatever you are describing will be described it just works like that Okay, and then I'll do the same thing here. Get that just a little bit more defined as that shadow comes around. This shadow expands. Right, that's close enough. It's not quite uh, not quite on the mark, but it's close enough. And I see, I need to do the same thing right here. I need to scumble here with this brush. I'm just going to scumble now. Now that I've got that shadow value in, I'm going to scumble the lighter values I see just come along top of it and move it, move my brush in the direction I see it going. Uh, this pick, 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 I see people doing painting. That's not painting, that's hand scratching. So you can't do that. Uh, if you want to uh, really describe something, really show it and show the life in it, then allow your brush to move in the direction the shape's moving. All right, now. At this stage, I, with this brush, I'll gradually pick up a little bit of light. Notice that the light that we see in those textures, and now I'm looking for textures. Notice the light we see in those textures um, is not as light as you think it. So you're not going to grab white for that. You want to get the value that you're looking at, a value that's very close to what uh, to the value that's overlapping. And so what I'll do now is I'll begin to allow my brush just to put a little bit of that value on the back of this brush. I'll allow my brush now just to begin to kind of move in the direction I see those textures moving. I'm gradually building now still an underpainting for textures in the light in uh, building this the light on shadow right here and just let my hand follow it and I'm not trying to make it exact yet just just let my hand follow it and follow that that's move that's falling like that uh let's see I'm just doing this in the shadow areas right now and over here, we'll do the same thing. Just a little bit of that lighter color, not real light. You see, I want that same value, or, or similar value. And I'm just going to follow what I'm seeing there. What is it doing? If you see it doing lots of things, you just pick one direction and go, take that direction. Then pick another direction and take that direction. I see a little piece like this kind of doing that, falling in that direction. You see that you can see that, that uh, texture beginning to emerge now as we're doing that. And here, we'll do the same thing here. We will just allow the texture to emerge uh, by allowing the scumble. You barely got any paint on the back of the brush at all. Not very much paint on the back of the brush at all. And looking at this, always look at the subject. Now I'm just gonna be using the corner, the edge of the brush. You see what I mean when I say edge? I mean this right here. So I'm just going to lift the edge of the brush. There we go. See, it barely touching. Have the edge of the brush barely touching. And when I see, I'm not stroking one stroke on top of the other. I'm stroking this and then this, 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 and then I'll go in the opposite direction. This, this, and this. And you can begin to see that texture begin to emerge. Now, as always, I want to keep these quick tips short. And so, as always, I'm not going to try to do the whole thing, just enough to give you some uh, clues. Now, before I go in with uh, the next step, I'll go back into here now with the darker. Now, usually we'll see uh, light or, or what we call shadow shallows, shallow shadows in grass and areas where we have uh, straws and grass and that kind of texture. If you look in between it, you're going to see 
some darker, a little shallow, what we call shallow shadow. See the same thing in falling water. So I'm going to pick up a value there that's a little bit darker than what I have here. So we just go over and gradually, gradually, gradually mix a little bit of that into there. Let's see what we've got there. Aha, that's enough. And the same thing, just scumble it with a quick stroke, just allowing your brush to drag very quickly and barely touching the surface. You see what I'm holding here? Barely holding the brush, barely touching the surface. And that helps that shadow, uh, that texture area to begin to form. Now, and you build as much of that as you can with your bristle brush. And then you go to something really ragged. And I always feel apologies to Rosemary <laughs> when you, something like this. This is just an old, it's called China bristle that you can pick up at Walmart or someplace that uh, for about you know, 50 cents or a dollar or something like that. And you can see what I did. Uh, it's, see how ragged it is. And I just took a, a exacto knife and I whacked some of it this way. Not scissors, they cut it too even. But something like an exacto knife or a real sharp knife and just kind of whack at it. Uh, and get it ragged, you see, like that. Now what I'll do, um, go back to my palette knife, and I'm going to pick up these colors. Now, I'm gonna, not going to take this to a finish, but I'm just going to show you enough here to show you how the technique works. Once, once you have the stage set, you have the values, you have the shadow values, you have the light values, and you have the direction of those textures um, pretty much set. Then you can begin to go in with something like this, or you might think of you know, I might think of another tool that you could invent to do this. Now this I want just I don't want to I don't want to load it. You see what I did there? I just barely touched it, just barely touched that paint. I pulled paint flat and barely touched it. And then let's get this a little bit more of that white on it. There we go. And then what I want to do is I want to see what's happening there, and I begin to sort of. Let those ragged edges, see what they'll do there? And I follow the direction of what I'm seeing there in the way of straw or whatever those, whatever the texture happens to be. And you can see it's moving in multiple, multiple directions. It's not just one direction. So I can be kind of haphazard with it. And you can see that as I do that, I can begin to build the texture of that hay bale, and uh, I'm not is it, okay. So we we'll, won't we'll take that one any further. Can you sort of see where that's going? And I do the same thing over here, where I'm following the movement of that. It's very small here, and just do something like that. You see there, and maybe do something like this, where there we go. I've got to keep that relatively flat. And you may have to go back, continue to go back and load the brush. You most likely will. There may be a time if you get too much paint on that brush, it's going to, you're going to lose that texture. So pull the paint off the brush with a dry paper towel and then reload. And you'll see that it's so easy then just to uh, look, at what, look at what it's doing. Where is it going? And you do that. You see? Yeah. And so you can then eventually, uh, with just repeating this, not too much, don't want to pull, if you push too hard, you're going to lose your texture. But just by repeating that, you can get the texture you're looking for. And so this is, I can just repeat just a little bit more right in here. Just a little bit more right in there. And maybe just a little bit more right in there. So you can at least see where I'm going with this. Now, this is repetitive. And if you're using oil paint, uh, you go for, it's going to take you, you know, you're going to need to kind of move over that several times. If you use an acrylic, it's going to dry as you go, and you can do it a lot faster. If you're using watercolor, you need to do it a different way. So, uh, I want to refer to this down here. If you have a value scale, if you have trouble with reading values, if you'll just pull a value scale down, and when you're in the shadow areas, you don't want your values to be any darker, any, any lighter than this side right here. And when you're in the not in shadow areas, the light areas, when you first start that block in, you don't want it to be any darker than you are right here. So if you have a, a value scale to guide you then as you're putting those values in, you should be fine. Give that a try and see if you don't have fun with it. And you can also use that for all kinds of textures. Once you get the hang of how this works, you might try some others too. 
Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMuds.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.